What's up, YouTube? Dude, where's the where's the fire? Mm -mm. Dude, we're on YouTube, man. We're with all these cool people. The YouTube people are awesome, but Babylon Five's letting me down right now, Jeff. So we, let's just talk about that really quick. Um, we were actually in a conversation not too long ago with some other Babylon Five stalwarts. Who oh, the thing from a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were like, "Hey, you know what's awesome? Season yeah. two. It's so <laughs> great." <laughs> I feel like we're 56 episodes into season two right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh, I remember them saying that. And I was like, I think I said at the time, I was like, you know what my biggest fear is, is that, cause we said it like towards the end of season one, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what my biggest fear is, is we get to the start of season two and it just sucks for a while. And like, no, oh, boy. you're going to love like, it. No, you're no, gonna you're freaking out. Great. Yeah. Like, there was one guy in the chat that's like, not every episode of season two is a banger. <laughs> I was like, okay, I want to go yeah. with that guy. <laughs> Let's see here. Let's see episode two. Yeah, not so much. Episode three, not three, so much. Uh, four, mm -hmm. five, right. Well, hey, you anyway. know, there's another episode next week. So, hey, you know. in case you guys out there didn't know how we felt about the show already, <laughs> spoiler yeah. alert. But that said, we've got some cool stuff. I don't know about you, Brent, but I, I, I took some. I, I made an effort to take fun notes because something about this episode had to be good. There's, there's, so there might be some fun stuff to talk about, uh, more so than just my new background piece, because the people can't, uh, can't see it. Right, bring them up, Captain John oh. Sheridan again. Uh, so last week you got on me about not getting the uh, Babylon five giveaway thing out. Mm -hmm. So I got that out and I found this cause I picked this up again a couple weeks ago. Uh -huh. uh, I picked this up and I was like, Ooh, that'd be a great thing to put in that little spot and give a little Babylon five love in my background over here. So uh, I now knew who this is. It's captain John Sheridan with a really tiny Babylon five station. <laughs> what and is for this? Some reason, a space station for ants. What I don't, is this? I don't, Okay, this has to be a thing. So he's pointing like this, right? And here's the thing. People trying not to be spoilerific, but people can't help themselves. The thing I kept seeing all over Twitter about this thing when I posted about it was people saying he pushes all the buttons. Now, I don't know if that's a reference to something that actually happens in the show or if that's like what people say about the the, the action figure and that's like a, a long-term thing. I don't know, but... It's just, it's, just, it's just a finger. Just well, it's out. like in Star Trek, right? They got the shuttle pods and it's like, oh, I need a really good pilot for this. And what's the pilot doing? Typing on a keyboard, right? Nice. Oh, I'm piloting. So that's like, this. well, you're on a space station and you got to do all this cool stuff. What do you do? Right. Well, I'm an action figure. And for action, I push the buttons. <laughs> right. You know, my favorite moment, I, I want to say it was in Voyager. Um, and they were on like a shuttlecraft thing and they're like, they need a really good pilot. And the pilot's just sitting there typing and like, he's calling out what he's doing, adjusting heading to seven, four, five. And the person looks at him and goes, why are you telling me that I'm right here? And like, I'm logging it into the ship's computer. I was like, oh, that actually kind of makes sense because otherwise it just sounds like you're telling me the audience, what you're doing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> because otherwise it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Cause otherwise all I see is you just going, aye, aye, captain. So what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, Jeff, we got to talk about this show, man. We do. We, we got to talk about this. this. Episode. You it know, is. we always, we always end this. Like one of my last lines is, well, that's it for this. And I am really looking forward to saying those and uh, getting on yeah, and talking about the next. Me too. So for those of you guys out there at YouTube land, uh, this is Jeff and I recording our show, our podcast, audio podcast of Babylon five for the first time today. We're watching the episode. The a distant long dark. The Long Dark. We're watching The Long Dark, and um, I waffled on this idea last week. Anyway, this is our behind-the-scenes recording. This is unedited. You guys are getting the full Monty, exactly how it happens, how the cookie is baked, how the pie is cooled, how the ribs are smoked. And, uh, you know, we'll clean it up for that. Well, we, Jeff will clean it up for the audio folks later, but, uh, uh, that's, that's what you guys are going to get here. Please like subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Uh, likes probably going to be about right there. Or no, I'm sorry. Subscribe is going to be up there somewhere and likes going to be probably down there somewhere. Uh, you guys do that. You know, YouTube by now, unless you're new, in which case, welcome that's to the where internet. They are. Thanks. Yeah. Right. <laughs> This technology is pretty cool, ain't it? Yeah, this is a, ter um, a terrible place. You should leave. It's not. <laughs> this is not the internet that it used to be. 
Oh, okay. Jeff, uh, <laughs> man, whenever you're ready, you, you got the, you got the thing over there. All right, let's do this. It's my first time. You're new here, aren't you? First time. First time. Welcome to Babylon 5 for the first time, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I'm watching Babylon 5 for the first time. And I'm Brent Allen. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm the line, and I'm Brent Allen. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Come on, man. We got it. Not doing it today, Jeff. Mm -mm. So this, isn't, this isn't the first time this has happened, right? So we have a podcast to do. We've got a lot of people that are really excited to hear our thoughts on this one. I need you to get on mic and do this. Is there something going on? Like, do we need to talk about this? Are you good? Oh, we're going to talk about it, Jeff. <laughs> we're going to talk about it. I am Brent Allen. I'm also watching Babylon 5 for the very first time. And you guys never warned me about season two. You told me it was going to get really good at season two. We are two veteran Star Trek podcasters watching Babylon 5 for the first time. And you know what we know as veteran Star Trek podcasters, Jeff? What's that? The first couple of seasons suck. Right? Yep. And so far like yep season like the first couple of seasons suck and there's like enough good episodes that like keep you in but then there's those episodes that just make you want to stop and you get enough of those in a row and you're like okay i'm getting really hard to push through right now and that's where i find myself right now jeff it's hard man i watched this well we'll get into it right yes. i watched this episode and i had a similar thought a similar thought but you know what we're still here we're still we going to talk through it. We and maybe, are. maybe as we talk through it, we'll find ourselves in a different place. Yeah. Fat chance. But you know what we are doing while we watch these things? Yeah. What's that? Is we are searching for Star Trek like messages to see if we can pull any, any goodness out of these episodes, whether they're even intended or not. Um, you know, and we're trying to decide how much we like this series and if we want to keep watching it going forward. Yeah, not if, it's not if we should have watched it sooner. It's do we keep do we do keep, keep doing going. this? Yeah, right. And, well, like Brent how said, how many episodes do we have left now? Jeez, uh, it, you know, like I said, I think we were talking before we went on mic. I feel like this is the fifty sixth episode of the second season. It right, just keeps right. And going. you know what? There are probably people out there who've watched Babylon Five like ahead, and they're like. No, but this episode was great because of this, this, and that, and it introduces this concept. And it gives you, well, you know what? Jeff and I don't know that. Yeah, we're not there, and I hope and don't I hope us. that happens. Right? God, I right. hope so. Right? Because I, you know, I've taken my new my new guys, my first time watchers through Star Trek. Like, this episode's great. This is like an amazing episode, and they watch it and they're like, yeah, not so much. Right. You oh. know, and you go, well, that's that's a thing in the fandom. Like it just gets better. And I, on a first time watch. Not so much. Don't see it as much, but we are Star Trek podcasters, Star Trek fans, but this is not for either of those things. We're not here to talk about Star Trek. To keep us on point, we play a game. It's the rule of three. And shockingly, it was not inspired by the Minbari in any way whatsoever. Yet here we are. What that is, is we each get up to and no more than three Star Trek references. When we hit one of those, you're going to hear everybody's favorite sound. And once you hit your three, you are cut off. There are no more for you. Brent, we love our games. We also love our sound drops on this show. And we have oh, yes. a five-star review from Apple Podcasts. Audio Weasel says, I'm catching up and loving it. On the one hand, I feel like I should apologize for my feelings on it since it's not fair that I know what's coming, but I won't. I'm going to hang on to my childish glee of tea. <laughs> Just wait, guys. You know what? What's his name? Alpha Dog or something like that? Audio Weasel. Yeah, Audio <laughs> Weasel. Close. Listen, Audio Weasel, I hope you were looking forward to these episodes because holy shlebang. Uh, I apologize. I just, I feel like for the last month, Jeff, this is four, four weeks in a row. This has been a month. We have been crapping on this show. Yeah, you're People, right. Like we have probably lost subscribers 
just be, those guys don't know anything. <laughs> they suck. They hate this right. show. I love this show. It's the best right. thing ever. Right. So, you know, I, and he's, I don't want to crap on this show. Like, I really do like this show. But, but Brett, the thing is, and I, this is, we talk about this. You and I both both crap on Star Trek, right? Like, sure, we're huge we Star Trek fans. It deserves, but we, it deserves it, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. If something's not good, that's what we're going to, we're going to call it out. And I, we're you know, a long string of those. You know what it is, is, is honestly, even those things that we know are not good, like it's still kind of endearing to us in Star Trek world. Maybe that's what it is for Babylon 5. Like these things are still endearing and people who are in it just don't realize how bad it is for a first time watcher. There's someone watching this right now or listening to this and they're thinking to themselves, this is my favorite episode of Babylon 5. <laughs> that's true. There and is. I want to think about that person as we're talking about this, right? Because we have a lot of not great things to say about this one, but for you, listener, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get real close here, to you, our viewer, our listener, who this is your favorite episode, I could not think more highly of you. You are a diamond in the rough. You're a saint. You're a special, special person, and I'm so thankful that you're here with us at Babylon 5 for the first time. So as we dive into the long dark, just know we care about you. Okay. And could you, if that is you, will you do me a favor? <laughs> Email us at Babylon 5 first at gmail.com. The number five, the word first. And let us know why you like this episode. No spoilers, but let us know why you like this episode. And if you have to say, I like this episode because of no spoilers, we will accept that as well. But I want to know who you are so that you can give me hope. Yeah, because we could use some of that. I've got one more for us okay. here, Brent. This one is uh, a from back a while ago, and I've been holding on to it. It's from one of our friends on Twitter, at Original Healer. And What's they up, said, I, this just like made me so happy when they said this, but they said, you guys, quote, made me purchase internet on board, which is an expensive luxury while living on a ship, in order to be able to continue listening on Spotify to your podcast. You know what? I'm going to assume that this person is in the military. So first, let me say thank you for your service. To Jeff, I feel like we should send this guy like a Visa gift card. To say here, cost? have some internet. I, like, I don't know how much it costs, but like have some internet on us. Uh, just for your service and say thank you because you're awesome. And now that I've said that in a microphone, I feel like we really have to do that. I think so too. I think you just um, committed us. Yeah. We, hey, healer, we don't edit YouTube, healer, so that's on. It's right. done. Healer, healer, like for real, like really real, email us at babylon 5 first at gmail.com or hit us on Twitter. We talk on yeah, Twitter. And send us your, um, the, what's, what's the military uh, APO? Address? Your APO, yes. Yeah, send it your APO, and uh, we're gonna drop something in the mail for you because that's awesome, and it's just our way of saying thanks for what you guys are doing for us out there. Yeah, or your email, if because we can, we can probably send a gift card by email as well. Whatever's easier oh, for you. Oh, fair enough. That's probably better. Yeah, I know and when I was more deployed, likely to make it into the. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't get our hands on mail for months sometimes. Right, right, so. right. Hopefully, he hasn't run out of internet by the time he gets that email. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, Jeff. Now listen. Speaking of people like Operation Healer and uh, all these other people. Original, um, at Original Healer. Original Healer. I'm sorry. Original Healer. I wonder if that's a reference to Bluey. Young girl dad right yeah. here. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, for people like Operation Healer and all these lovely people who are joining us, uh, Jeff, that maybe some haven't seen this episode in a while and they're like, really? I remember this episode being better. Why don't you tell the folks out there exactly what this episode was or maybe was not about? Well, a hundred or so years ago, just before first contact with the Centauri, Earth sent long-range sublight ships out with crews of scientists that were cryogenically frozen. And one just showed up here at Babylon 5. Two cryopods on this old ship are there. It's called the Copernicus. There's one with a desiccated-looking corpse, and the other with a scientist, Mariah. Sheridan and Ivanova can't help themselves and start checking out the Copernicus. It's like a time capsule. Dr. Franklin keeps busy too. His autopsy reveals the dead dude doesn't have any organs left in him, and he's decided to slide in for some of that sweet, sweet rebound love that doctors through time immemorial have had the privilege of enjoying. 
Mariah was married to the corpse. Well, back back when it was alive. Uh, but hey, he's dead now. So Franklin apparently sees her as fair game. In the meantime, Murdoch from the A-Team, or honestly, a very, very close representation of him, is playing the role of the prophet Amos and is proclaiming God's final judgment is falling onto Babylon 5. Or, I don't know, not really that, never mind, never mind. His name just happens to be Amos. He's not proclaiming God's final judgment. He's just saying that the armies of darkness are here. Seriously, if you've ever read the book of Amos in the, in the Bible, it's kind of not that far off. Garibaldi takes a liking to Amos. He's a vet of the Earth Minbari War. Actually, a pretty decorated vet from the war that's fallen on hard times and now lives life as a lurker. He, like Garibaldi, was a ground pounder. But literally no one else on the entire station seems to care at all. So they just write him off as lurker trash. Garibaldi takes the time to listen to Amos. Turns out that he and his team were attacked by some monster that killed his entire unit by, yep, you guessed it, mysteriously ripping out all their organs. It kept Amos alive and snacked on him until the rescue party showed up. He's convinced that that thing popped onto the Copernicus, ate the husband, snacked on Mariah, and is now here on Babylon 5 waiting for the buffet to open. Navigation records on the ship confirmed that it went by the moon Amos's unit was on, and then it changed its course to Zaha Doom. Amos insists on being used as bait to draw this monster out. It works, and the combined force of a whole bunch of PPGs kills it. I think, at least. Poor, poor Dr. Franklin adds yet another heartbreak to his growing list as Mariah heads back to Earth to catch up on the last century so. To catch up on the last century or so. And, oh yeah, oh yeah, to grieve her dead husband. They fix Amos up, and everyone's going to live happily ever after. Or not, Sheridan and Ivanova are piecing together the coincidences of occurrences that all center around Zaha Doom, all but confirming what Jakar has been saying all along. Speaking of Jakar, the episode ends with him reading from his book of Jaquan, I think, that has a drawing that looks almost exactly like what we think the outline of the monster was that we saw. Also, we learn that the entire story of Babylon 5, at least up to this point, has been a holodeck recreation as part of Reg Barkley's therapy sessions with Deanna Troy. <laughs> Brent, what did you think of The Long Dark? Jeff, you just made my night <laughs> like kind of like this episode just went and like you got three lines of dialogue at the end that actually was like, oh, this episode matters on some level. You just made that recap way better with your last line. Um, <laughs> I got to be you just said everything that happened and I still don't really know what this episode ended like how, like what happened when it ended. I still I still can't figure it out. Anyway, here's the thing. This is one of those episodes, Jeff. Every sci-fi series does. You know what I'm talking about? It's the one where a generational ship is found and there's pods on it with bodies in it and all the bodies are dead except for one pod, which is still found alive or maybe it's empty or something like that. And what you know is if it's a pretty girl inside, she's going to be cool, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a dude with a British accent, he's going to be evil. Like, and he's there to cause trouble. Like, that's, that's just what you know. In this case, we got the pretty girl and this was predictably she was cool season two so far though jeff continues to be a dumpster fire big time i don't know if people in this podcast can pick up you know since we've started recording um this episode was all over the map it never knew what it wanted to be is this a murder mystery is it a, a fish out of time type of story if i could mix my metaphors there <laughs> is, is it an alien invasion is it a universe expanding episode where they're introducing a whole new player into everything? Is it a social commentary on mental health? Is it about the horrors of war or is it just itself a horror story? I could have done that. 
But this episode didn't know what it even wanted to be or what it wanted to do or what it was trying to do. And ultimately, Jeff, I found this episode just to be a waste of a very talented guest actor and a waste of 50 minutes of my life, which hopefully means it's going to make for a really good podcast episode today. That's the plan, right? <laughs> well, there was some real incredible acting, right? Dwight Schultz. I, it's such a throwaway part for him, you know, but I mean, he did such a great job. He did so good. There were I, times he did good and times I was like, mm, his, and I think it's the writing. I think he was doing the best he could with the writing he mm -hmm. had. You I know? agree. I agree. Cause, and, and I think he tried to like, when things didn't make a lot of cohesive sense with the writing, he was just like, I'm going to lean into the crazy here a little bit. Right. And because it's Dwight that. Schultz. That's what he does. And he does it better than anyone else through the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And then Anne Marie Johnson, she's the one who played Mariah. She went on to be in Jag. She was in That's So Raven. She was in quite a few yeah. other things after this. I mean, <laughs> those are two shows that go together <laughs> Jag and That's So right. Raven. Well, and she actually was on a ton of soap operas, like daily soap oh, yeah. operas. So, I mean, just a really interesting acting history for her. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they, they were awesome. They were so good. And, that's for, what we got for what for for really i mean could i, I and I'm, i have my hand on a sensor button because there's no way i can say this without censoring myself but what in the actual <laughs> was she ever doing in dr franklin's quarters yeah that but, was entirely inappropriate he even called himself out on it yeah it was entire. oh this was closer than the med lab dude she, she was knocked out take her to the med lab yeah you're a professional. You're a doctor. If nothing else, leave the door open. And then don't but like caress her face. Call, call <laughs> your nurse and have her come join you. Do not be in your quarters alone with her where she was knocked out unconscious. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. There's to me, and this is a, a drum we have beaten repeatedly on this podcast, but at this point, and, and you, you have mentioned before, like you live and run and, and socialize within doctor circles. If this ever happened, what would happen the next day that doctor walked into the office or into the, he's hospital? losing his license period. Yep. No question. Right. Yep. But you know what? Next week we're going to watch an episode and he's gonna be right back in med lab, just doing his thing. Yeah, it's it is entire. I mean, that was my note. It is entirely inappropriate for him to have this girl uh, in his quarters. And and I mean, I'm sorry. On the other side, and I know it's '90s writing. It is what it is. But she fully embraced that kiss. Yeah, like she did. She just found out her husband was dead. Minutes. She just found out. Yeah, minutes ago. What is she doing? Well, and she's like, all she's all like, well, you know, I mean, we didn't have the best relationship. I think we broke up like six times or what? Who, who does that? <laughs> Right. Like, you literally went to sleep planning to to do something in the future with your husband. You woke up and he's not there anymore. And so you're gonna make out with the literally the first guy that you lay like within on. ten minutes. Yeah. Like, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? It was it was abysmal. And I I made this note. I said I've got it. I know who Doctor Franklin is. I it, it hit me right when I was in the middle of it. He is the Jordy LaForge of Babylon Five. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm going to get buzzed twice or if I get to piggyback on that one later. I said, no, he's not Jordy. He's season one, season two, Dr. Bashir. Yeah. We were, he brought that up way last creepy. Week. Yeah. Last week. Way he brought that creepy. Up. It, and the, I think he's beyond season one, season two, Bashir. I mean, Bashir was creepy, but he was verbally creepy. He, yeah. he never lured an unconscious patient into his quarters. No. And then he also never, like when he went in for the kiss, like, did you, did you notice it? Like, like Franklin had his head turned a certain way and she like went in for the kiss and her head was tilted like the exact same way. And like somebody needed to just move like half an inch. So their noses wouldn't bump, but then they bumped anyway. I was like, you guys, and that's the take they used. Like, really? He's like this kissing thing. I just don't understand. <laughs> I'm just not good at it. Uh, yeah. That whole sequence was just not okay and in part of that sequence too there i mean the only thing that she did she did two things that i thought were good i guess one was the interaction that we can talk about a little more but like in the zocalo with jacar 
that I thought mm-hmm. was pretty cool. But when Garibaldi came to be like, hey, you got stuff inside that dude too. Can uh, can you can you feel him and help us chase him down? That was one of like two or three, like to your point of this being a horror episode, they had mm-hmm. a couple like jump scare setup scenes. And that was one where right? she's like laying down in med lab and they got the creepy music and the camera coming in. And then you see Garibaldi's yeah. hand come out and he's like, hey, sorry to, sorry to interrupt you here. It's like, you can't even do jump scares. Right. Make jump scares right. Yeah. I didn't know what it wanted to be. Like, I brought, I was like, oh, now it's a horror show. Oh, no, wait, no, I'm wrong. It's not a horror show. It, it, it's, it's not. Uh, can I go back and talk about Dwight Schultz for just a second, though? Yeah. So this literally was my opening experience with this episode. You know, he's, it's, it's just him by himself going crazy, right? I'm watching him. I'm watching him. I'm seeing him go crazy. And my thought was, huh. I don't know who this guy is, but you know who actually would have been really good in this episode? Dwight Schultz. <laughs> and then like the camera pans in, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, that is Dwight Schultz. <laughs> That's literally what I did in the middle of that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah I was watching uh, that scene and watching him go and I was just like, we've seen this guy before. There's, uh, It's familiar. Where have I, where? And then it kind of came in close. It's like, oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah, I was, I was, because I mean, just Dwight Schultz, just he does crazy so good, and and there's the thing, like that's the other thing, this could have been even a little bit of a comedy, like let the guy be a little bit of comic relief, the way Dwight Schultz does crazy comic, comically, right, yeah. like not 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 disrespectfully, just you, you do it that way. They didn't do that at all. It took like a very it tried to take tack. itself serious, and then it just, uh, it was just a mess of an episode, Jeff. Well, like I think all the, the way through. I think the back and forth, though, like if you take Dwight Schultz and Jerry Doyle in the scenes they had together, uh-huh. those were good. Those, I mean, there were moments. There were definitely moments in them, but taken as a whole and the subject matter that they were kind of talking about, I thought they did mm-hmm. a really, a really good job with that whole thing. Sure, sure. I, I well, that, that's what I mean. Like it could have gone that like a discussion about mental health mm-hmm. and and the the effects of war. Like you could have gone that direction with it. And they they set it up. You talked about it. they set it up for jump scares to be a horror episode. They set it up to have that sort of a conversation. They set it up to be a murder mystery. Hey, who killed this chick's husband? They set it up to be right? a romance, they right? Set it like to be a romance. forbidden romance. But they didn't but they didn't land any of it. Like they never engaged any of it. Like I I just this was a mess of an episode. You know what this was? This was season two's infection. Yeah. It, except yeah. this didn't have the 27 minute spot where it turned on a dime and became really good. It was just a mess all the way through. Like I, I saw like, I don't know if it's just cause I tuned out or just cause I wasn't it, it like, I, I just, I didn't understand. I still don't get the end of this episode. Like they get out there and they start shooting them with all their, you know, some, some science fiction shows have laser guns. Other science fiction shows have, have uh Ray guns. Apparently Babylon five has spark guns, yeah, <laughs> sparky guns. Like, but it, it, it got this thing. And then like, there's the close of the book at the end, which you said kind of sort of maybe might look like the shape. I, I got that it was supposed to be, but I had no clue that they actually were the same shape. I was know? just tracking on like in the book, it was big and it looked right? like it had like these big horns, like the bad horns, guy in legend. Yeah. You know, and and the little shape thing that they were shooting the PPGs at looked like it had those big, those big horns. See, I couldn't tell. And I I wasn't paying attention to that. But now here's my question. Is that a shadow? Is that what the shadows are? Is that thing right there? Well, my question is more specific than that. Do they have a body now of this thing that they can like cut open and start learning about did they even kill it like literally they just shot until someone said stop shooting and they're like hey we got it yeah did you like how do you know you got it did it just disintegrate like did you hit it three times with a zach gun see jeff you don't even know that reference just yet it's Mm -mm. okay don't hit the buzzer because it's not a star trek reference uh you want a star trek reference though i'd love one i'll give you one uh because this is literally my last note on the whole episode i'm done after this that's that's i'm out I have a few more, so we d- we have more podcasts. Keep listening. Babylon Five has Jumbo Gach. It does <laughs> a big wavy thing up on the table there. Just, how could how could it be anything other than Gach? <laughs> like, 
Well, okay. One it's thought like on Doc's that. Parents. One thought on that, and then I, so I'm, I'm stringing a thing together. One, okay. I'm pretty sure that was a Drazi who was sitting there eating that big gawk thing. Where uh -huh. was the sash? Yeah, I have no idea what you're talking the, about. Well, we had the we had the whole Drazi, Drazi thing. Yeah, I remember that, but I, green I sash, don't remember it. Green sash, Oh, purple, the purple green. and green thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Avon you know, it's Avon. over. But it, it lasts for 1.2 Earth years. Well, that, like, the, yeah, this is one of those things where we, we said this better turn into something. Better they better be into... fighting for the whole year, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Is that and, so? In the intro, it says it's the year the Great War came upon us. Is it maybe talking about the Drazi thing? <laughs> Right, like we're thinking it's this whole thing. That was the spoiler, by the way, that I was alluding to way back at the top of season two oh, that I was yeah. hoping to protect you from. But yeah, apparently uh, the Great right. War is going to start. But I like the idea that it's the Drazi War um, on well, Babylon. See, but here's the thing: I, like I'm left with that going, but I don't know what war it is. I, I have no clue where they're going with that. Like, it could be some Great War with the Shadows thing that we keep hearing all about. Well, I think it's the or, great war that Zathras was talking about back in Babylon Square. Oh, great, great war. Great war. Yeah, Zathras and great, great war. war. Yeah. Zathras, man. I forgot about him. Um, yeah. All right. So, Jeff, I'm going to shut up and just let you go because I'm, I'm done. Well, the pieces I was stringing together is yeah. Amos tells his story, right? That I was on this moon. There was this group of us. And then this monster came and just ripped through us. It was like, you know, hell, hell on this thing. And it left me alive. Did you catch how many, and you probably, based on your notes, <laughs> didn't care, but did you catch how many people were in his unit? Please tell me it was 47. It's 47. Yes! So yes! You, can are... use, you can use that reference on me. That's a Star Trek reference to the core, and you can use my last one. It was in the show. It's not a reference. It was in Babylon 5. Yeah, but we're pointing it out because I'm about I'm about to take I'll, I'll give myself the buzz because it's my point on this. And it's that uh there's some people that we've been having back and forth with the last couple months, really, who are uh -huh. adamantly in the camp of Deep Space Nine is a complete ripoff of Babylon 5, beat for beat. I mean, right. this, they both are in a space station, and they're, they both have holes in space. They're clearly the same show. Really? Because I think that Jumbo Gach and 47 people in a unit, I posit, my good sir, that Babylon 5 ripped off deep space nine there you go there and i go. say that very tongue-in-cheek i actually don't believe it at all but it's uh can i can i just like just since you brought that up and we're clearly gonna have a lot of extra time in this episode um this is where i am on that 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 whole deal jms has this show bible he's shopping it around he's giving it to every network out there every network has it or or whatever right um and people were reading it and Warner Brothers or or CBS CBS I guess it was CBS passes on it and like yeah we're we're not really going to do it but they get certain ideas in their head right like hey here's a here's a show about a space station um apparently the changeling is supposed to be a thing that's a comparative deal uh you know there there there's a couple of little things and um you know hey there's a there's a female who's who's you know a high ranking stuff and you're like Hey, Star Trek, we'd like for you guys to come up with a new uh, a new series at the same time, right? And Star Trek, Star Trek, the creators of Star Trek who didn't have the show Bible mm -hmm. come back and go, hey, we were kind of thinking about doing a space station. And here's a few, and they kind of like, so, hey, what if on your space station you had, like, here's a couple of elements. Like, it's just general, not like, hey, let's take their entire theme and plot line and all this. It's just, here's a couple of elements, maybe if you work those ideas in. OK, I say that just to say I have recently had the opportunity to talk to some current Star Trek writers. Mm -hmm. OK, and one of the things that they are saying now on social media, like they say, don't send me scripts. Don't send me scripts because I don't want to get your idea in my head and then have to question if my idea is something that's sort of like leaked over and then have you come sue me later. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my my suspicion, and again, I don't know. I don't know the full details, and I don't know how deep the comparisons really go. From what I understand, it's they're like it's really close, like in the first season, and then they both kind of diverge. Uh, so we're past the first season. But my guess is Star Trek was wanting to do something similar, and 
there were just ideas bandied about that are like general ideas, but it's not a lifting and like a, we're going to steal all of your work and do it ourselves. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't see that right now. Yeah. Could I be wrong? Yeah, I could be, but I, that's, that's kind of the way I see it probably going down. And I know that Jeff, I don't know about you as a comedian. Yeah. I did. I did stand up comedy for seven years. And it is huge in the comedy world. You do not steal jokes from other people. Mm -hmm. But you know what happens often is people come up with the same joke independently of each other. Yeah. It happens. They're like, oh, you stole my joke. No, dude, I also had that same idea. I was just watching a guy the other day who's on TV, and he's doing my joke that I did for seven years. I'm like, son of a... Like, that's mine. That's but mine. He got it to, but he got it to TV first, so... Yeah, yeah. You know, I just, I was like, huh. I promise you that dude never came and saw my show and took my joke. I just, you know, I, that's, that's, that's where I'm attributing most of it to. And, you know, if, if there was a stink uh, among it out there, you know, at some point studios and businesses, they're just, they're going to pay to shut you up and just move on. Yeah. We're not going to make it a big thing. Just here, here, take some money and go away. Exactly. It's, it's fine. You know, and in yeah. the immortal words of vanilla ice, right? There goes, there's goes dun, 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 da, 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 dun, 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 da, da, da. Mine goes dun, 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 da, 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 dun, 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 da, da, See, totally different. There's an extra eighth note in there. Right. Totally different. It's not a rip off right. at all. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he win that? I think he was fine on that. One. I don't know. I don't know. I, I know what you're talking about. I've heard him say that. Like, <laughs> It's the funniest thing in the world to listen to. You're just like you. You added an eighth note, okay? So, but hey, that's uh, that's that's artistic license, and that's fine. that's look. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. So anyway, like I say, that's my personal take on probably what's going on out there. Am I biased towards the Star Trek guys and don't want to paint them with that? Yeah, but yeah, you know, whatever. So I think you know. Last week we we asked ourselves a lot. What was the point of this episode? Why does this episode even exist? You know, right. part of it was validating uh, the existence of shadows. Like other people are seeing them. They're seeing them in the same place. They're seeing them in different, uh, you know, uh, contexts or whatever. They use hyperspace. Like we got some addition to the the, the shadow story. So what was the point of this episode? I think what it was was about validating Jakar. And, and a lot of the stuff he's coming up with, there was the league of non, um, non-aligned worlds called the council meeting. And, you know, Londo is just like, eh, your stories, your, your kid, whatever, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm out of here. But Jakar was like visibly moved by, uh, by the guy who is testifying, who also believes, you know, we talked about this too, where everyone's like, oh yeah, the coming darkness, the army of shadows. Yeah. We're on board. And here's Sheridan and earth just like, what? There's a, there's a what? I'm but not going to believe that until it happens. I don't think that's a big deal. Yeah, but but, but Jakar is totally being validated in what he's doing. And then I thought that scene between him and Mariah was really cool where they met and she's like, uh, you know, oh, you're the, the the woman from the past. Like, go back. The, the future isn't what it used to be. <laughs> right. Yeah, because I think, I mean, literally what, seven episodes ago, the sky was the limit, you know, for the Narn. Right. They were going to go kill all the Centauri. Like, things are awesome. And then Quadrant 37 happened, and he's like, oh, the game has changed. And so I think this whole episode was like to be like, oh, and by the way, Jakar's right about everything. Good stuff's happening out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, there, that, there we go. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I have anything else. Really. You know, one other thing, like, and I think this is, yeah, this is my last one. All right. Sheridan pulled a Sinclair in this one, and I wasn't too happy about it. I mean, I got it, but I wasn't. So they've got Amos throwing himself out as bait. Garibaldi has thrown everybody outside of this little zone that they're in so they can, you know, they can corner the, the monster and take it out. Sheridan and crew come in, and Garibaldi's like, dude, I don't know. His PPGs don't have any impact on him. Sheridan whoop, hits his hand. And he's like, okay, Ivanova, head over here. Do this. Assign this position. Like, he totally took command of the tactical team, which is Garibaldi's job. I refuse to believe that Garibaldi's incompetent. He's shown us his competence time and time again. So I feel like he just kind of overstepped his authority what, in that let moment. Me, let me ask you this, though. 
Okay. From a, from a leadership standpoint, from, from whatever, when you're in an emergency situation, which they clearly were in that moment. Okay. If somebody comes up and says, Hey, you know, here's X, Y, Z, like as a leader, as a commander, as a, as a person, like on some level in my head, like, I'm like I don't have time to play leader right now. We just got to get this done. So yeah, I'm going to overstep, but that's because of the situation we're in. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't have time gonna... to check and make sure that you're good or give you direction and let you figure it out. Like, we just got to make this happen. Well, I think this like, one, there's one step, one step he takes where Garibaldi says, yeah, these PPGs aren't doing anything. Sheridan says, so then what's your plan? And then if Garibaldi's like, I don't know, then he steps in and does it. But if Garibaldi right. comes in, he's like, well, I want to set this kill zone. Like maybe he had this brilliant idea for everything, but he just says, right. Ignore, you know, cool. Hey, they aren't working. So what is your plan? Don't have right. one. Cool. Here's mine. I'm going to step in and do Would it. it have been better if he didn't get on the horn? If he just told Garibaldi, okay, Garibaldi will then do X, Y, Z and let Garibaldi execute it. No, because I, I don't think shadow leadership like that is, is always effective, especially in a situation like, and it just slows things down. Do you yeah. have a plan? Oh yeah, I got it. Cool. Get it. Let's do it. Or he said, if he doesn't cool, then you have your plan. You jump in. And you do, it's an emergency situation. Like you said, you don't have time to sit and be like, well, let's talk about this. And how do you feel about this thing? <laughs> you can have that conversation afterwards. Totally. Right. And, and what sure. are all your options? And uh -huh. but in okay. the moment, what is yeah. your plan? I don't have one. Great. I got it. Or my plan is this great. Make it so, you know, or, oh, I got a plan. Get on the horn. Tell them what to do. Yeah. Jeff, are you, are you done on your notes? I am. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if in the podcast feed you want to cut out that whole thing about the 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 deal. I it wouldn't hurt my feelings if you did. We're not going to cut it out of the YouTube video. However, Jeff, you and I have said from the very beginning of this podcast that we are not going to stretch a show or try to condense a show to a certain time. That's right. It is going to take as long as it takes, however long or short of that it is. So with that, Jeff, unless you're going to stop me, I will lead us into the next part of our show where we've hit that spot where it is time to boil this all down and see if the show has any of that star Trekky quality to it. Is there a deep moral message? Are we holding up a mirror to society? Are we trying to give us hope for a better future? And so with that, I am going to take the lead on this one and rate this show on a scale of zero to five deltas as to how star Trek this episode is. And I got the deltas. You're going to do the deltas. You're oh. going to do the star theories. Hey, you know what? I'm literally reading your entire script right now. You are. Yeah. It is in your color. Uh -huh. mine. <laughs> Jeff and I, Jeff and I literally <laughs> color code our notes as to who's got each spot. And I'm sitting here reading Jeff's spot. To be Jeff, fair. Take, take it, buddy. Go ahead. I'll, I'll take it. I'll pick it up from there. And I'll, I'll redo the whole thing. <laughs> but to be fair, it's almost 1 a.m. for Brent. It so is. It's true. It's been it's a true. day. So. All right, Brent, it is that time. We've reached the part of the show where we boil this all down and see if the show has any of that Star Trek equality to it. Maybe it's got a deep moral message. It's holding up a mirror to society or giving us hope that we might do better in the future. I am going to rate this episode on a scale of zero to five deltas. So how Star Trek-y we think this episode is. And Brent, you're going to rate the episode on a scale of zero to five star theories as to how much we enjoyed this episode. I think there was a message in this one, right? So spoiler alert to my rating before uh, we got on, before we did our prep for this, Brent texted me because I had watched this episode a little before him. And he's like, I hope this one has uh, some Star Trek in it. And I'm like, oh, it does. Totally does. Like, Good. And I'm like, oh, not, not I didn't say message. <laughs> I didn't say message. I, I, I like, because I've been missing a Star Trek message. We haven't had a good Star Trek message in an episode since season one. Yeah, it's been a long time. But this one had the beginnings of one, and it was that it's not okay to write people off because of their social status or their mental health. Garibaldi listened to Amos. He took him seriously, and because of that, they were able to take the monster down. Garibaldi shared part of his story where uh, his team was setting up a perimeter, and there's one guy who's like, your perimeter's no good, it's no good, it's no good, and they didn't listen to him. They called him crazy. They ripped through the perimeter like it was paper. He was able to set some stuff up that saved their lives. Like without that guy, they would have been slaughtered. Slaughtered. It was a cool thing to bring up. I hope they go somewhere with it, right? Amos is still alive. They saved his life, so maybe there'll be more on that. 
But this episode also had criminally irresponsible doctor-patient relationship stuff and a direct message from Mariah saying that we still haven't outgrown violence, like outright telling us that Babylon 5 is not Star Trek. In fact, it makes me think that Mariah watched Star Trek before she got on the cryo ship and she's like, oh, the future isn't what I thought it was going to be. So I am going to give this one because it introduced a concept that was great and important, but did nothing with it. I'm going to give this one one single Delta. What about you, Star Furies? All right. Doing Star Furies, this is how much we liked the episode. Um, am I good? You're good. You got me? Okay. Yep. Sorry, my whole thing just spun out on me. Um, am I good? Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Okay, but sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, so I'm doing Star Furies. This is how much we liked the episode. I'll go back to my original state statement. There were so many opportunities for greatness in this episode. A bad episode can be redeemed by the, by the message that it is trying to tell us. An episode that has no message can be redeemed by being a good episode. This episode did neither. And therefore is not a good, like Jeff, I, 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 I seriously hated this episode. Wow. I'm giving this one no Star Furies, despite Dwight Schultz. You remember remember last season we had Grail? And that episode was saved by a fantastic guest star? If Dwight Schultz couldn't save this episode. Yeah, I'm he sorry, could. he just couldn't. Like, I like Dwight Schultz. I'm a Dwight Schultz fan. Shout out A-Team. Like, he's awesome. But this was just not a good, good episode. And I'm giving this one zero Star Furies. Maybe... Maybe that's a little harsh. I will. I want to acknowledge this because we have had a run of not great episodes and I'm getting sick of them at this part. If that makes sense. Like at mm -hmm. this moment, I'm really sick of bad episodes. If we had just come off like a couple of good episodes and then this one was there, I might be like, yeah, this one was okay. It wasn't that bad, but it was okay. But on the back of where we are right now, the experience I'm having as a fan, I hated this episode and I have a very bad taste in my mouth about this episode. So no star furies for me. Well, this next part's going to be a lot of fun then, because starting now in season two, we are ranking the episodes like we did in the season one wrap up. This will be the 100% absolute definitive, objectively accurate ranking of the second season of Babylon 5. So Brent, right now in first place, we've got points of departure. Number two, we've got the geometry of shadows. Number three, revelations Four, a distant star. So where in that ranking do you put the long dark? I, I, I mean, I, I can't say here that, so the litmus test I use for this is okay. Which episode would I want to watch first? The distant star or this one mm -hmm. revelations or this one? I honestly can't even compare. I can't make the comparison because I, I, Honestly, don't remember several of these episodes. <laughs> We're just a few in. So just based on my feeling right now, I want to put it at the end. I want to put it at number five. Like, I don't want to put it at number five. Like, I'm going to go ahead and just slide it to number six and leave five open because I can't stand to have this in the top five. Can't give it negative star theory, so you'll give it, like, the right. open right I'm going to bump it out of the top five and never even give it a chance. All right. I'm not going to argue. And now I get to say the words I've been waiting over, like, 40 minutes to say. Brent, that's it. For the long dark. Next week, we are going to watch a spider in the web for the first time. Now, we don't look ahead. We don't look at pictures, synopses, anything about the next episode. Brent literally just heard the next episode's title for the first time. But we like to guess what the next episode is going to be based on that. So, Brent, what do you think a spider in the web is going to be about? Well, spider in the web is a predator. They have caught something and they're they're going to go eat it. They're going to chew it. So this has to be something where somebody, I think that's going to be a metaphor. That's going to be an awesome metaphor. Somebody's going to get caught in something and it's going to spring a, a trap. Um, I am calling 
I am manifesting this into the past to, to make it happen 30 years ago. This is a Londo episode. Okay. Maybe even a Londo and Jakar going at it episode. And Londo has Jakar like on a string with something. I don't know what it is, but it's Londo is, is like, I don't, I don't know that it's as like world shifting the spider and the web. Like this might be just really small. Like, you know, he's got a flower for him or something. You only bought a flower this time. Right. Like, I think it might be one of those episodes and I kind of really hope it is. Cause I need some smiles. I need some chuckles or I need a really good Star Trek message in this next episode. That'd be good. I think when I first read a spider in the web, my thought went to something being trapped in the web, but it's mm-hmm. like, it's the spider. So I have two thoughts and the one I'll just say, I don't think it's the next one, but the shadow ship things we've seen kind of look like spiders. So maybe there's something there. Huh? But okay. what I think my guess is that we're going to get some bester in this Ooh. next one. Yeah. Ooh. But I think, I think what they're going to do with Bester, though, is he's going to come onto the station and they're going to try and manipulate things in a way to make him look like he's the good guy, right? Kind of like uh, Terry Silver and Cobra Kai in the third season. Like, everything I'm doing is fine. What's wrong with you? You're the thing. And then that'll become an ongoing thing where he's the spider in the web and he's trapping Sheridan in there, some or Ivana or somebody from the, the main cast. Frankly, I just want some Bester, but I would love another Londo and Jakar one. But hey, we're going to find out right here next week. Thank you so much for joining us through this. If you haven't already, please subscribe wherever you're listening to us. And if you've joined us on YouTube, subscribe and like and hit the bell and do all the fun YouTube stuff. And please stop by Apple Podcasts, leave us a review, and we'll read it right here on the podcast. So until next time. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. You know what I could really go for right now? What? What, Brent? What could you really what could you really go for? A big old steaming plate of jumbo guck. All right, man. Yeah. Uh peace, peace and love life, dude. Whatever. This is my first time. I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, you warned me before this started that you were going to like cuss and swear and really freak out. You did a good job. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't going to do it on the podcast. It was just between us. <laughs> well, you were warning me that it might come out. You're like, that's my, that might, might be a thing. That just, just for what Jeff's talking about, I told him I, I've actually been off my meds for like three or four days just because like I ran out and didn't bother to go get the next bottle, which was like in our bedroom and our medicine safe. <laughs> and my wife like, got mad at me yesterday. She's right. She's absolutely right. And no, I, I'm still a little, the chemical balance is not quite right yet. So it'll, it'll get back. I'll be okay. It takes maybe, some time. maybe, maybe that's actually, maybe that's why I feel so like shitty about this episode. I you love know? it though. Like it's unfiltered, right? This like, is the long, dark unfiltered. It, this is exactly. Okay. So wh- I remember when I heard this episode, the long, dark, my thought went to that. Wait, did I say this last week? Because we didn't do that thing this we week. Forgot we forgot to do the do thing. The thing. We about. Oh, I think we both yeah, just wanted to get done color, with this thing. Right? <laughs> right. But I was thinking about that episode one from Voyager where uh, Seven was there by herself and everybody else was in cryo freeze. You kind of brought it up. You just like, I this bring will be that? the one where the, I think you were almost pointing more to the no stars version of Voyager. Right. But that, but that was also a part of that. Like, like she was going into that void. She was the only one who could survive in that area. Yeah. And it was like a big void. And she was by herself and like nothing was out there, if I remember it right. Yep, that's um, one. But that was like, that's what I was thinking. And hey, it kind of did turn out to be cryo freeze. Yeah, well, not kind of, it, it, it was cryo freeze. It was totally. Stasis. Yeah. I guess they were going in stasis spots. One was a real, that's actually, that's a good episode, actually. It's really good that's seven. A great episode. episode. That's a great episode. We skipped it for being me, and I'm really sad because it's a good episode. Yeah. It's a great episode. I got to do it for Starfleet Leadership Academy, and it led me, like, it was funny. I, I, I'm normally very controlled in what I, cause I talk about some pretty complex topics in there. And so I take detailed notes and as I was recording, like I just started going off on solitary confinement in the U S penal system because like uh-huh. the impacts that seven experienced are what people who are put into solitary confinement experience on a regular basis. And I thought it was a really, it's a really good commentary on how, uh, 
how much we damage adults in custody. Yeah, See, that's, you can listen to that one. So yeah, that's, that's, that's Star Trek being Star Trek in the way that it should be Star Trek. Yeah. So good. Just, just really saying. well done. Just saying. So, all right, guys. Hey, listen, YouTube. <laughs> Let's just get out of here, Jeff. Uh, thank Let's you guys it. for watching. We'll be back next week with a spider in the web. That spider in the web. At least it sounds promising. I keep thinking about it like a spider in the web. Ooh, Should be one of those songs. That uh, almost sounds like it could be uh, uh, the beginning of a James Bond movie too. Like oh yeah, right. one of those a songs. Spider in the web. Yeah, it was, a, yeah, yeah. It was a pretty crappy Nirvana, which is most Nirvana songs. Hey, on that, I'm just going to drop that bomb, and we're going to get out of here. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>